Longard is cool, and most people don't understand how it works. And at the risk of making a very hard to hurt esque video, I'm going to show you. I love using this guard, and I use it all the time. I'm not actually any good at it because I have stubby arms, but hey, it's still fun. Now, just to clarify, when some people say long guard, they mean this. This is a legitimate guard, but I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about this, sticking both of your arms out and holding your hands closer to your opponent. Kind of like you're a mummy. The point of the long guard is to trade power for speed to get your hand to the target faster than your opponent. I'm going to explain how to use the long guard offensively, how to use it defensively, and give you some extra moves to give your long guard some pizzazz. And to help me demonstrate all these, I got Ed from Metrolina Martial Arts. He has no lines, he is merely my practice dummy. Offensively, the point of the long guard is to stay in your opponent's face and constantly threaten them with small, quick shots. Being so close to the target means your punch doesn't have time to gain energy in the air, so the point isn't knockout blows, it's to rack up volume. Max Holloway is an excellent example of this when he's not being beat up by Alexander Volkanovsky. You can use hand fighting to get past their guard, mainly down parries and scoops. Plus, keeping your hands in their face can help to obscure their vision and screw with their situational awareness. Most importantly, be active. Your hands should be doing something at all times. Just standing there like a mummy isn't going to do anything but make your arms tired. Your hands should constantly be punching, fainting, hand fighting, or doing something productive. They should never be still. And obviously this rule applies to pretty much any guard, but a especially long guard. This works especially well against people with a tight guard or anyone that relies on shielding. People usually put up a shield until there's a break in their opponent's offense and then they launch their attack. By using hand fighting and pressure with a long guard, there's not really any break in your attack. You can simply keep one hand framed against their guard until the other hand lands and then keep switching off. Plus, they're already blocking 90% of their own vision, so blocking that last 10% is pretty easy. And if they do try and launch a sudden attack, you should have a tactile read on them, which makes it easier to react. And this leads us to defense. Defensively, the long guard works quite differently from a classic high guard. Using a traditional boxing block becomes much more difficult when your hands have to travel all the way back to your face. This makes your blocking reaction time noticeably slower and completely disrupts your offense. With the long guard, most of your defense should be proactive, not reactive. This means using defensive traffic, stops, frames, and intercepts. Defensive traffic simply means occupying the space that your opponent wants to punch through. The basics of this are pretty easy because the long guard kind of already does that. The only thing you need to do is just move your hands around a little, which can be accomplished with a stream of soft feints. In addition to this, you can use stops, which involves covering your opponent's hand and attempting to pin it to their body. Any hand that I'm actively leaning on is very difficult to hit me with. You can also use posts by stiff arming on their head and shoulders in order to stop them from closing distance and make it difficult for them to see their target or load up any power into their strikes. This is because fighters usually generate power by rotating their bodies, and posts can be used to disrupt that rotation, affecting both their power and accuracy. And because of the touch-touch-touch nature of long guard, stops and posts are very easy to work into your normal stream of offense. Now, these are all proactive defenses designed to disrupt your opponent's ability to even begin generating offense. But if they do manage to get punches off, there are reactive defenses as well. Your first option is going to be to use parries and catches to stop any straight punches from hitting their target. These defenses also lead into your offensive options by using this hand fighting to create openings for a counterattack. If your opponent throws a wider attack, the distance enforced by your long guard should limit them to overhands and long lead hooks. You can exploit the opening they create in their guard by using intercepts, which simply involves getting to the target before they do. This can be a risky tactic because it doesn't necessarily stop their attack. It just seeks to hurt or disrupt your opponent badly enough that their shot either misses or lands with less power. If you want to actually stop their attack, you can use leverage blocks. Leverage blocks involve throwing your arm up and slightly out to force their punch to take an extra long trajectory so it can't reach your face. This block goes by different names, but I learned them as leverage blocks. What you are not doing is you are not throwing your arm way out to the side. You're moving your arm up and at a slight angle to the outside. 
You can also rotate your arm over and flare your elbow to help protect your chin. Whatever you call them, leverage blocks are very rarely taught, but they're extremely useful. A lot of people might say, oh, that wouldn't work because a technical hook would go right around your block and hit you in the face. Yes, it would, but a tight, well-structured hook requires them to be close to me, and the point of a long guard is to keep them at arm's length. If they're throwing hooks around my leverage blocks, the problem is not the leverage blocks, it's the range you're using them from. Either fix your range or do something else. Another way you can stop hooks and overhands is by using bicep frames. If he throws an overhand, I can essentially palm strike his bicep, which either stops the punch in its tracks or causes it to deflect downwards. This has the added benefit of possibly making his biceps hurt and giving me the option to pull his arm into a clinch. If I throw a punch and I miss his bicep, then I just turn it into a leverage block. Both the leverage block and the bicep frame are super old school boxing tactics that fell out of favor decades ago, but I'm bringing them back, baby. You'll notice that a lot of the defensive tactics of long guards, such as defensive traffic and parries, are very similar to some of the offensive tactics of long guards, such as constant pressure and hand fighting. This allows you to stay defensive while attacking and allows you to quickly get back on the attack after stopping their offense. Also, here's some important notes. Remember that the key to long guard is to keep your opponent at the end of your range. You should be using frames or quick shots to prevent your opponent from moving into the pocket or clinching. And you should be using footwork to stay on top of them because standing outside of boxing range with the long guard does nothing but invite your opponent to kick you in the ribs. Also, be aware that while hand fighting, you don't actually want to occupy the center line and you don't want to get stuck tracking your opponent's hands. If I'm tracking his hands, that lets him decide where my arms go. He can lure me to the outside and throw an uppercut, or he can lure me to the center line and throw a check hook. To prevent this, I want to aim my hands at his shoulders. Remember, punches don't originate from the center line, they originate from the shoulders. If I continually aim my rear hand at my opponent's lead shoulder, then any punch down the center line gets stopped, and any punch around my guard can be leverage blocked or bicep framed. And notice that my hand should not have to move very far to stop their punches. Now, what I've described is the basic outline of one kind of long guard strategy. So here are some fun additional details you can use to make your long guard game even better. Framing off your opponent while blocking their vision works beautifully with angle cuts. Your post prevents them from effectively turning with you, and blocking their vision makes it difficult for them to figure out where you even went. Instead of throwing a standard tight hook, throw a long hook to stay at a consistent range. If you're using MMA gloves, you can move your thumb out of the way to avoid jamming it. Or you can use that thumb knuckle to intentionally poke them in the eye, because eye pokes are only illegal when you throw an illegal strike. With a closed fist, there's nothing the ref can do about it. Quickly switching hands allows you to land punches while maintaining a tactile read on your opponent, permanently interfering with their vision, and keeping them at bay with a never-ending post. If you find yourself outside of boxing range, put your hands down. Keeping them up while outside of range does nothing but make your arms tired and say, please, kick me in the ribs. You can save energy and deal with kicks better by just relaxing. Make sure you're not taking the phrase, always keep your hands up, too literally. You can use your post to gain an advantage in ring control by simply pushing or turning your opponent where you want them to go, whether by pushing them back against the wall or turning them around to disorient them and stop their advance, such as used by George Foreman against Joe Frazier. If you're in MMA gloves or bare knuckle, you can grab the hands of someone that's shelled up, pull their guard down, and elbow them over the top. And you still have control of their wrists. You can also cross your hand over to the opposite side of your opponent's guard and push them into a kick or knee. So there you have it, the tips and tricks to be more successful at long guard. It's very easy to use, and like many other guards, it is criminally underutilized. If you've got more tricks to use from the long guard, put them in the comments below. And if you want to complain about how your short, stubby arms don't let you use long guard to its full potential, get in line. If you've got more tricks to use from the long guard, put them in the comments below. It's like a painfully happy. Painfully happy. Put them in the comments below. If you've got more tips and tricks to use for long guard, put them in the comments below. Is that better? It was the same. How do you want me to do it, huh? If you have any more tips or tricks for long guard, put them in the comments. No, never mind, don't do that. That's what I did. Tell her I did that. <laughs>